So another question comes through on the YouTube channel uh, about an L45 disc bulge uh, with pain on the right hand side uh, and, and, and the associated sciatica symptoms with that. So what is it, what's going on, what can you do to help it? First and foremost, it's very, very similar to an L5S1 disc bulge or injury uh, in terms of the symptoms that you get. There's a little bit of disparity uh, or difference, but essentially it's down here uh, this disc in particular here, and on obviously the one hand side, this is the right hand side here. Um, this is obviously not three, four disc bulge, but down here is being irritated. You're hitting this little nerve and you're getting pain going down the side. In terms of what's going on, it's fundamentally the same as any other sort of disc bulge uh, in that lower back. It's slightly less common at the four or five than the five S1. You're gonna get those symptoms down the legs. Now, you have to understand, like with any of these sorts of issues, what is fundamentally causing that disc to bulge? Was it, and we don't know this, but was it um, a one-off event that caused that disc to bulge? Were there some fundamental issues that are meaning that that disc is under repetitive stress above and beyond the, any of the other discs in that section of the spine? So say, for example, instead of having a nice smooth curve, they've got a flattened section of the lumbar spine, and that's day in, day out, driving more pressure through here. Or perhaps they've got some sort of defect in that section of the spine. Much, much more unlikely, but these things do come up. What should you do going forwards? Firstly, the MRIs, which are generally then lying down, okay, they're helpful, they, you see the disc bulge, but in our opinion, you get much more useful clinical information from the standing up x-rays to understand what is actually causing that disc bulge and what course of action should we take as a clinician to then get that patient better and get the consequences of that disc bulge to start to calm down. First and foremost, we'd be doing some uh, analysis of this section of the spine to see where we are starting from and where do we need to go, where's normal and where is the patient relative to normal. And then doing some work with the laser roundabout in this section of the spine to start speeding up the healing of the soft tissues that will have been damaged in addition to the disc in that section. The reality is you can't really injure a disc only. There are going to be some soft tissues that are damaged around there, supporting ligaments, facet joints, etc. that are going to be involved because of the um, interrelated functionality of the whole section of our body and particularly the spinal segment. So some laser in that region there. We might also do some decompression work to take pressure directly off that disc. The discs are like uh, little water balloons for example and when you get the slip disc or the bulging disc it's because the balloon's been squashed and it's getting bulged and, 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 and poking out essentially. And decompression just takes that pressure off, allows that wound to heal a little bit more in that section of the lumbar spine and combined with the laser works really really nicely. Other things we'll do, some work down the leg where the patient's getting the symptoms, it could be coming down the side of the thigh here or down into the lower portion of the leg, depending on specifically which nerves have been impacted in this section with that disc bulge. Um, so doing some vibration work down those muscles is really, really helpful. Medium to long term, you're looking at eliminating some of the factors that have led to the disc bulge. So it could be that reduction in curve, so reintroducing that curve, and that's done through the rehabilitation that we prescribe here in the clinic, as well as some generic strengthening and stretching of the muscles as well. You can't just hammer away with treatment. You have to also get the patient doing some element of stretching to deal with tight muscles, some element of strengthening to deal with weak muscles that aren't doing their job, and some re. Uh, reconditioning of the balances between muscles on the front and the back of the spine and the front and the back of the hips as well. And all of that will help the patient get better.